continue. Question number 11, the Honourable David Bennett. Mr Speaker, to the Minister of Land Information, does she stand by all her actions and statements in regard to the Creswell New Zealand Limited application? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Eugenie Sage. Yes, in their appropriate context. Supplementary question. Will the Overseas Investment Amendment Bill make any changes to the tests that were applied to determine the Creswell application? Order. I first of all want to receive an assurance that the introduction of that bill is the responsibility of this Minister. No. David Bennett, further supplementary. What independent economic advice did the Minister receive to determine that there was a substantial and identifiable benefit to New Zealand from the Creswell application? I and the Associate Finance Minister, the Honourable David Clark, received advice from the Overseas Investment Office, as we do with other applications. There were, was information about the increased number of jobs, 60, the increased investment, 42.5 million, the increased export receipts. Why didn't she follow the precedent of other ministers, such as in the Lochinvar and Auckland Airport decisions, in declining those applications where the Overseas Investment Office had recommended approving the decision? Because the criteria in sections 16 and 17 of the Act refer to substantial and identifiable benefits, and the information provided showed that the application satisfied those criteria. So I made the decision under the law. A point of order, the Honourable Jerry Browning. Uh, just uh, with regard to your ruling out that first uh, supplementary, the Minister may not be responsible for the bill that's currently before the House, but is surely responsible for advice that would have been provided in the formation of that bill. And what the question was about the advice that would have been provided uh, by way of asking, is it a provision? Well, speaking, speaking to the point of order... Speaking the... with respect, uh, Mr Browning can't belatedly raise that issue. He has to raise his point of order at the time. He didn't. Well, that, oh, that, speaking that, of point that of order, is, that is accurate. That is, that is accurate. We're still, we're still on that question. And while the, uh, the, I'm, I'm only working at a slightly faster pace than the Deputy Prime Minister, <laughs> Mr Speaker. So order, I would ask you to consider. Order, order. Now, now, we now have, I think, four ministers who have interjected while Mr Brownlee's been on his feet uh, for a point of order. Um, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's fair to say that there is some um, basis for the reply to the point of order on the, on the part of the Deputy Prime Minister. I think uh, it's around 23, uh, the, the um, Speaker's ruling, which, says, which is the immediacy. It's, you know, it, is, it, is, it is important to raise things immediately. Um, it is also a question of, of, of remedy. Um, we're now well past uh, that that supplementary question, um, I asked whether the member had responsibility for the area she was being asked questions about. Uh, she, she was told, she indicated that she did not, uh, and I just accepted that. Point of order. Sorry. A point of order. The well, just to clear this up, because I thought uh, that I have viewed the house today running in a fairly smooth sort of way, in which um, uh, you've uh, you've desired. Uh, and I thought it was inappropriate to interrupt the flow of, of the questions until we got to the end of it. But I think it's a really interesting point that if there is a bill before the House, which a minister clearly should have input into, uh, that on the basis that their, their name is not on the bill, they don't have to answer any questions about that input. I think that would be very bad for the House of Scrutiny of the Executive. Kay. And, if I may, while I'm on my feet, sure. uh, given that there were four interjections and we're slightly short of supplementaries for the next question, <laughs> how do you feel about that? Well, <laughs> on, the, uh, on the fact that the, the sides are couple up and, and unfortunately some of the members who were supporting them also um, were, were involved in the exercise, I think we'll leave that there. What I am going to do is ask David Bennett to ask the question exactly as he did ask it and it gives me the opportunity to review my decision uh, because we're going quite well on time and I'm feeling generous. Supplementary question. Will the Overseas Investment Amendment Bill make any changes to the tests that were applied to determine the Creswell New Zealand application? Yeah, and, and sorry, I'm, as, as I ruled earlier, I, unlike as was indicated to me, it was a question of advice. There, there has been, there was no 
suggestion of advice in there. It was a factual question uh, around, around a bill for which the Minister has wrote no responsibility, and I, um, I reinforce my, or I, I reiterate my decision to rule it out. Any further supplementaries, Mr. Bennett? Mr. Sapor. Well, you, you're not getting that one. That one, having it again doesn't count, no. but you're not getting an extra one for getting it wrong. No, no, no for the other. Right. Question number 12, Denise Lee. To the Minister of Local Government, is she satisfied with the